Welcome back to the Homeschool Advantage Podcast. I'm your host, Bex Buzzy, and today's guest is Carissa Getcher. She is CEO and founder of Sunflower Music Lessons, where she provides a plethora of music education resources like music history, music appreciation, lesson helps, and actual music lessons. At Sunflower Music, the belief is that any parent can teach music education. Carissa's lesson plans are supplements to curriculum parents are already using. How, you ask? Well, let's say maybe you're studying the Civil War or the Industrial Revolution in Europe. You can put a soundtrack to the history you are learning and bam, now it's music history. Or the composers of Europe as supplemental resources. You can also use Sunflower Music music appreciation worksheets to analyze music from any era. Download a simplified piece of sheet music so your young musician can play a page of Beethoven. And there are so many more resources for your naturally curious child. In this episode, we talk about the myth as to why most people homeschool. It used to be common thought for people to homeschool for religious reasons. Now, people might be homeschooling, you know, because their kids are getting bullied or their children need accommodations. Also, there is definitely a status division between those who can put their kids in lessons and those who can't. At Sunflower Music, Carissa believes that in this information age, any parent at any budget can teach anything a kid wants to learn. And lastly, she talks about why homeschooling is so important to her. That as a single working mom, she is dedicated to finding a way to provide for her three sons without having to put them in public school. She loves watching her boys grow into the best versions of themselves and how they now, right now, know their value and homeschooling allows her the opportunity to be there daily and speak love into them as they grow into men. Carissa knows that a good home is the key to that dream so she will work and sacrifice to make sure that it goes from a dream to reality. Carissa has a powerful story of loss in one area, gain in another, and then the birth of sunflower music. So go grab your coffee, go grab your tea and a pen and paper, because you're not going to want to miss what Carissa has to say. And today we have Carissa Getcher from Sunflower Music Lessons. Carissa, say hello to our guests and tell us what is something you think most people don't know about homeschooling? I think that something most people don't know is actually why most people choose to homeschool. I know some homeschoolers from previous generations, and it was a really common stereotype that either their families were very religious or maybe very hippie. And I think that the pandemic kind of changed those stereotypes a little bit, and it became, for a while, I think people thought it was a political choice to homeschool maybe vaccine related or some, you know, maybe common core related, some kind of political statement. But the statistics actually show something much different, which is that most people who don't plan to homeschool and then change their mind and pull their kids out to homeschool usually do it because of bullying in schools or because their child's needs are not being accommodated, whether they're like special needs or something like that. Um, And so it is very it's a very personal decision. It's something that parents are doing because they're trying so hard to give their kid whatever the best schooling option is. And it's not a religious choice and it's not a political choice. I guess it can be sometimes, but that's not the overwhelming majority of homeschoolers. They're just ordinary people who really love their kids and are trying to give them their best shot. So with that, understanding what is the focus of your homeschool community like what is it that you do to support the homeschool community with your like with the music lessons how what goes on there so i create a lot of free music ed resources whether they're articles that i write teaching parents how to take charge of music education in their homeschool or i provide resources like worksheets or playlists or even sheet music for people who are, you know, trying to do learn an instrument at home. 
And I do that kind of stuff because I feel like a lot of parents who jump into homeschooling really feel lost at first. They feel like they got to wear all these hats and be the best teacher of all of the subjects. And so many parents feel so underqualified to teach. I think that's like the biggest self-doubt that most parents have is, I don't know if I'm qualified to teach my kid. I'm, I don't know if I can be a science teacher. I don't know if I can be an algebra teacher. And I don't know if I can be a music teacher. And I think that music is one of those resource or one of those subjects that gets overlooked a lot. It's an extracurricular. And if a parent doesn't know, doesn't have a music background, doesn't ha play an instrument, doesn't feel like they're, you know, their kid or doesn't have like opportunity to put their kid in a choir or something like that, they might forget about it completely. Or they might just think, I can't, I don't have a background in music. I can't teach music. So we're just going to skip it. And so I create these resources to kind of give parents more confidence and help them realize, yeah, I can actually do this. Music is important. Music can really enrich our homeschool life and I can do it and I can do it affordably. Yeah. Music is probably one of those subjects that does get overlooked and it's probably one of the most important ones because it really does access different parts of the brain that from what I understand that it helps in every subject when you are really good in music it just kind of like opens those areas in your brain it helps you think critically your math skills go out the wind i mean they are like amazing yeah, well, I, and they might it might be blasphemous as a music teacher to say i don't think music is the most important subject but it can be like you said it can be this tool that opens up other subjects whether you're using, I have um, a lot of articles that talk about this, whether you're using music to memorize facts. Like I still know all my 50 states in alphabetical order from singing you know, 50, nifty, United States, like songs like that, that teach you facts. And I've heard people do multiplication tables like that too, um, or memorize the preamble to the constitution, things like that. And so it can, it can help you memorize facts, but it can also, like you were saying, the reason it would teach people or help people be like math whizzes is because it helps you recognize patterns and being able to see them and process them quickly. And since math is essentially logical patterns, it, your brain has already made a lot of those connections. And so you're able to do that more theoretical kind of work. And it, it, I always tell my students when I'm working with them and they're, they might be frustrated that they're having trouble learning it quickly, learning to read music quickly. Well, you're learning another language. Not only are you learning to read notes and you know decipher what they mean, but you're also having to learn Italian words, Greek words, German words, French words. Like it is a whole study. And the curriculum resources that I create are meant to, they're meant to correlate easily with curriculum that parents have already bought. So I'm specifically talking about like music history and music appreciation. So for instance, if you're studying the American Revolutionary War and you're studying George Washington, things like that, you want to put some musical context into it. Mozart was alive during that time. Well, here's a unit on Mozart. You can listen to the type of music that George Washington listened to. And by using music history and music appreciation to give context to history, to culture, it real I think it's I think it's just so amazing because then it makes it real for kids. That is so dynamic. Like, oh my gosh, that really and it gives a, a very rich <laughs> understanding and a very a very rich knowledge on what they're learning. Like I've never thought of listen to the music that George Washington listened to. Like never even like that oh, never yeah. crossed my brain. And that's really why we cool have people thing. like you. <laughs> yeah. And I mean I'm I'm got I've got more plans. I'm always taking suggestions. So if anybody listening to this has ideas, what kind of units they want me to cover. I know I want to do women composers in the future. I know that there's different cultures in different countries whose music backgrounds I want to cover. So we can give more context to our global culture. And that connects, like just like, you know, trying food from a new place, listening to the music of a new place. That is how we connect to a new culture. You know, even the music of today, it connects us as a culture. So learning about our history, you have to, I feel like music has to be part of that conversation because it really speaks to the hearts and minds of the people who are alive at that time. I mean, I just really don't think that the 
importance of music history can be overstated because it really does paint that picture and it's not impossible to teach. It's not hard to teach. You can just take these playlists, you can put this little lesson plan, these few worksheets. I even I even do like free coloring books and pages and I've got sheet music that's really simplified. And then you just you just stick it in whenever you're studying about the Civil War or about civil rights movement or about, you know, any other point in history like let's let's add something to this. And you don't it, it doesn't cost anything extra. It doesn't take any extra planning. It's but it but it adds so much enrichment to the curriculum that you've already purchased. So what inspired you to create your content? <laughs> well, I wish I could say that it was because I felt like this great righteous need to give back to the homeschool community, but that is it was actually a little more selfish than that. <laughs> when I I found out this last year that I was now a single mom of three kids um, who had been homeschooling for nine years, and I needed to stop working as much from home, stop being self-employed. I needed to find um, real consistent work, and it needed to be work that I could support all of my kids on um, and work from home and keep homeschooling them. And the work that I chose was being a, a writer, a content writer, and I needed a portfolio <laughs> to show to show other employers that like I could do the work. And the only thing that I really knew to write on, the only subject I had was homeschooling or music ed. And I already had my Sunflower Music Lessons website up for where I give lessons out of it. And so I just created a blog on there and I started writing articles. And as I would write the articles, I got more and more excited about the content I was creating. And so I started putting out curriculum, coloring pages, music, worksheets, unit lessons, things like that, and it just kind of snowballed. And it's been, it's actually been really successful as well. My portfolio growth, my social media growth, and my experience from putting my skills to real world practice has actually landed me several job offers. So that's really, it's been a really cool. So it was just kind of this thing I had to do out of necessity, but it turned into something I loved and something that is helping me take care of my kids. And I love that. You're such you're such a boss, honestly, just moving <laughs> forward. Yeah, you know, a lot of people would have just kind of withered, honestly, but you rose to the occasion. And um, honestly, it's going to be a pretty powerful testimony to your kids as they get as they grow with you and they get older. They're just going to be like, my mom was a boss. Like, well, if you they know. don't believe me, I'll let them listen to this podcast and I'll say well, someone else said it. I don't, I'm not doing this by myself. Like she said it, not me. Take her word for it. I'll tell him again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but that's awesome. I am really proud of you for just moving forward and taking the leap because a lot of people, even with everything going for them, have that fear. But in, in it, in a, a lot of times it does take those hard moments because we don't have a different choice. And that's usually where we grow, where it, there just is no, it's like there is no other choice. My brother-in-law, my, my husband's brother, he works a lot. Like he's hardly ever, he's hardly ever around at least uh, up until he got this new job. But so she had two kids and she would there and they were both under two, you know, two kids, both under two years old. And, you know, people would see her and she's carrying both on her, on her one on each arm and backpack and, all these different things and people are like wow you are so amazing she's like you know she tells me it's like i don't feel amazing i just have That's to do what it you have to do yeah if you don't do it like how are you going to get anywhere exactly those types of situations where it breeds things like this where a person comes forward and creates something amazing out of something that just you just don't think about it, right? Now you have these lessons, you have sunflower music lessons, and you're you're going for it. So when learning challenge is becoming a little bit more on the rise all of a sudden, and gifted children too, like you hear about all these different types of things, like two e children and like you know twice exceptional. How does your curriculum? How does your program meet those expectations? And how does it help parents teach their children as well? 
Well, I kind of already spoke to this, but my the stuff I create, these different resources, they're really pick and choose. It's like a buffet. You don't have to take what doesn't apply to you. They're, they're just supplements to the curriculum that you already have. It's not like you have to purchase a whole other curriculum. In fact, you don't have to purchase anything at all. Right now, all the resources I have are free. So you can just pick and choose. If you go to the website, there's a little homeschool resources section. And then there you can scroll down for music history, music appreciation, worksheets, posters, music education posters you can hang in your house, things like that. You can just if like look at what you're studying, like I already spoke on, if you're studying history, you can put a soundtrack to the history you're learning. And now it's music history. And so that means that you can provide more resources for your children who are naturally more curious. I kind of hesitate to use um, maybe gifted, but those who are more curious or those who get bored easily, those who need more work and are eager for it, then you can provide more for them. And you can also find like really fun, no pressure activities for your child who needs more support. Things like I have some music appreciation worksheets for the different levels. And it's mostly just like, here's some suggestions of music that you can listen to together. Well, what instruments do you hear? How does it make you feel? Do you have any, like, maybe you could draw a picture of something that comes into your mind while you're listening to it, and it's no pressure, it's just a fun activity, and you get to just, that could be something you recycle again and again. Eventually, you won't even need the worksheet, it could just be something you do as you listen in the car, and that piques your children's interest into their, the world around them, the music that they're listening to. It doesn't have to be classical music, by the way. I don't know if I could recommend Coco Melon, but you know, even music on your radio that you're listening to, just have them listen to and be like, what do you think that this song is? You know, what is it saying? How does it make you feel? And that kind of introspection is something that can be done at any level. And it can really, it, it'll, it'll be, maybe surprise you what kids will come up with when they're really listening and tuning into those emotional experiences even those who need more support and need more patience. It, it's definitely achievable for, you know, I even use it for my toddler. So it's not, it's not out of reach. You know, I, I love what you said that you can use it just anywhere really and spend time with your family. What you're doing, it sounds to me like you're, you're helping people families make memories as well as they come together and they're listening to music and they're asking questions and you're getting deeper. You're kind of getting to learn who your child is and learn what they like. And it's really, be, it becomes a real experience. You know, you know, we just talked about how like listening to music from the past or music from other culture uh, countries and stuff tunes you into those cultures. What is what is your family's musical culture? What kind of music do you guys listen to together? Do you guys dance together? Do you what kind of songs do you sing to them at bedtime? That is a musical culture that you are building in your house. And I have lots of articles actually that talk about how you can include music in your homeschool with almost no materials, no preparation. And sometimes some of the suggestions are as simple as let's dance, let's sing together, let's read books that have you know melodies together because it does, it creates those memories and it creates a, a very real emotional connection. Music does create those emotional connections, whether you're a family singing together in the car or whether you are part of a 50 piece orchestra, you're going to feel something when you make music with other people. And um, it's, a, it's a really important tool that shouldn't be overlooked in your homeschool. What's the call to action? Where can they connect with you? Where can they get your resources? Where can they be able to just find out more about Sunflower Music Lessons? Well, so I do have um, social media. You can find me at Sunflower Music Lessons on Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest. But I also have a website, which is just, it's very simple. Get your pencil ready. It's sunflowermusiclessons.com. <laughs> and when you get there, you can either find the section that a lot of it is dedicated to the music lessons that I provide. And then there's also a homeschool or a homeschool support section. And I was kind of talking about that earlier. And that's where the blog is and also all of these music ed resources, which it and, it and for now they're all free. But if you did decide that you wanted to take music lessons after listening to me and deciding that I am as awesome as I sound, <laughs> which I am, then you could Schedule, go on to the website, sunflowermusiclessons.com, go to the enroll section, 
and schedule a free consultation with me. And if you were brought here uh, by the podcast, then you'll get 50% off of your enrollment fee. So, and your enrollment fee covers things like books, a tripod for your virtual music lessons, free recital music, and um, any other kind of resources that I could ship to your door. <laughs> so it's a, it's a really good deal to get half off of that. I like half off of anything. That's really good. <laughs> That's oh, yeah. really, really good. <laughs> oh, As yeah. we wrap there's, up. There's also oh, sibling good. discounts and stuff. There's also sibling discounts and stuff for any homeschoolers who are listening with multiple kids. So if you message me and you mes men mention this podcast and you mention you have multiple kids, let's set up a free consultation and let's see what kind of discounts we can get you so you can start putting more music into your homeschool. That is awesome. Multiple children, <laughs> multiple, m multiple sibling discount. I love that. That is awesome. You're doing a great job, Carissa. As we're wrapping this up, what is one thing you want parents or homeschool families to take away from our conversation today? I would say that the virtual information age that we are living in means that it is possible to educate your child in any way and in any subject that you believe in. And you can, you can also, I'm living proof of this, you can also find any kind of job that you want because the information on how to do it is, is out there and it's probably free somewhere. So just don't believe the lie that you are not qualified or that you are not as qualified as a professional teacher. And don't believe that your circumstances are forcing you into making choices because even if you feel powerless right now, just surround yourself with veteran homeschoolers and people in the kind of job that you want to work in and just find ways to scratch and carve out your new future because it will be the greatest sacrifice you can make for your family and it's only for a little season and you can do anything hard for a little while so stay strong and remember that you can homeschool you can do this i love that you said you can do hard things for a little while that is like my motto we do hard things <laughs> Carissa, right. thank you so much for coming on today and just sharing your life, you know, being vulnerable and just talking to us and giving us your testimony and sharing a lot of your wisdom. You have a lot of wisdom and just thank you for tonight. Thank you. Thank you for launching me into fame and stardom. I really appreciate it. I can't wait to see <laughs> what the future looks like for all of us. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> all right. If you love the conversations we're having here on the Homeschool Advantage podcast, follow or subscribe our podcast to stay in the loop and never miss this amazing content. And please highly consider taking a minute to leave a positive rating and review to help others like you discover this show. See you next time.